Hey, managers of the Super Conference. This is your commissioner, Tyler Burkhardt, here with the week two recap. Uh, usually after two weeks, we have about four teams that are 2-0. Uh, this year, we actually have five teams that are 2-0, so we'll go through those five teams. Along with those teams that are 0-2 and trying to make a push uh, onward with 11 weeks remaining. Let's first go through the awards for week two. Manager of the week goes to Mark Johnson of Portland Car Ramrod. You know, Mark, every year, it seems like he gets really unlucky with the draft for whatever reason, and then for some reason, it all works out for him. Uh, he started Dante Moncrief despite T.Y. Hilton playing, and Moncrief ends up, he's looking like the second best receiver on that team, as Andre Johnson is really aged. Uh, he scored over 100 points, Mark did, even with Jarek McKinnon in his lineup. And uh, Marcus Mariota, who's his quarterback on the bench, is starting to look like a really good quarterback and could start in a 16-team league. So it'll be interesting to see if Mark ends up trading Mariota to a team that's looking for a future star or really needs help at the quarterback position. Um, insert uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Cleveland Shamans into that conversation. Um, the Jay Cutler moment of the week I give to Tyler Powell. You know, Tyler Powell, I think back-to-back -back weeks, has been around 100. And he just lost by .48 fantasy points. So really unfortunate start for Tyler Powell here. Uh, the other reason why I have him as the Jay Cutler moment of the week, uh, he spent 11 FAB dollars in Jericho Mc. Uh, Jericho Kotri, and then a few days later he threw him away to back to free agency. So virtually he just threw away 11 FAB dollars. Uh, Tyler, uh, just a note, that's not the best strategy. And I know things change, but I, I found it kind of comical. Um, but I'm sure Tyler's not laughing this week after losing by .48 fantasy points. And that leads us to the game of the week, which Tyler Powell's in. New York blackout taking on Las Vegas. And uh, Rob Huff put, uh pulls off his first victory of the year, and uh, it was on a late Brandon Marshall touchdown. Nothing better to kick off week two here. Um, so a big win for Las Vegas. And more importantly, a big win for the NFC West. The NFC West has been, you know, as of the last few years, kind of a disappointment but they won three of the four matchups um, uh, in week two. So the NFC West starting to look stronger. So props to everyone there. And speaking of the NFC West, San Fran Frenzy pulls off the upset over Minnesota Bryans as uh, San Fran Frenzy goes to 2-0. And Josh Miller, I know he's had a few disappointing years, finally is starting to look like a contender here in the Super Conference. Uh, props to him on uh, putting together a pretty good team thus far. Looks like that was one of the teams I kind of messed up on in the pre-rankings. As far as the MVP, Cam Newton of the LA Quakes, despite no receivers, pulls together 27 fantasy points because the Carolina Panthers cannot move the ball any other way besides Cam Newton running the football. So props to uh, Cam Newton helped get Nate his vi first victory on the season. All right, let's take a look at the rankings. Fargo and Bargo in Brooklyn. Broilers hold still the first two spots. These are the teams, in my opinion, are the teams to beat. They look very solid, uh, very deep at running back, have two solid running backs at least. Brooklyn has three that I really like, so I like that. San Diego Wales is now at the third spot. You know, Aaron has had great defensive performances to keep him in the race, but he is a step behind the other teams because of his running back position. But knowing Aaron, he'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. At number four, I got San Fran Frenzy. Josh Miller moving up a few more spots in number four. And then LA Quakes at number five. Uh, you know, my brother is going to be an interesting team moving forward to see what he does with his depth. As we all know, he made the decision to invest in Des Bryant for the playoffs. So we'll see what happens there. And number six, I moved Minnesota Bryans down just a little bit. Uh, Mir Abdullah came back to earth week two, and I think that's where he will stay for a lot of times as defenses um, will uh, watch him closely 
Um, and I, he's not an every down back, as I mentioned, but his wide receivers, Minnesota's wide receivers are fabulous, so that will keep him in the thick of things. Number seven, Kiln Legend. Despite an 0-2 start, he's got Le'Veon Bell back, and that is bad news for the rest of the league. Uh, Lucas will be just fine. I mean, it's never good starting 0-2, but, I mean, Lucas did this last year where he started poor and finished strong, so... I expect nothing different. Number eight, Portland Car Ramrod continues to make his climb up the chart uh, with a 2 0 start. Uh, obviously, if he plans on starting Jericho or uh, Jerick McKinnon at running back, that is not good. But thanks to um, some good depth at receivers, uh, Portland should be able to compete. It also helps to have Rob Gronkowski, too. And number nine, uh, the Las Vegas Marvels. Rob moving up three spots. Number nine, I really think this is a team that's going to compete, especially with the Vikings now knowing, oh, we need to give the ball to Adrian Peterson. That's always helpful. I kept New York blackout at 10. Tyler Powell, you know, he's put up two solid weeks. And despite 0-2, I'm not going to discredit him. You know, he's got four really good running backs. Now with Ted Gurley probably back, um, Danny Woodhead is going to be probably on the bench, so those teams looking for a running back, I would be trying to trade with uh, either him or myself, who I ranked at number 11 uh, with a 101 start. A lot of injuries now with Tim Coleman out. Uh, luckily, Ronnie Hillman and David Johnson's stock is rising, um, so I had four running backs I actually really like right now, and I'm willing to trade one, uh, but... Um, you know, obviously with the Des Bryant now Tevin Coleman injuries, those are not helping. Number 12, Indianapolis Eyeball. Uh, both his running backs, uh, Crowell and Sankey, came back to uh, earth, so I moved him back down to 12 because of it. Green Bay Legends moved up to 13 after a good win. This is a team I think I'll have to give a little bit more credit, uh, but I still think C.J. Anderson will lose his job in a week or so. At number 14, Seattle Sasquatches, 0-2. Uh, really here with um, Kyle, it's because of the Mike Evans slow start. Uh, otherwise, you know, this is a solid team that really could maybe use an upgrade at running back, but that's it. Cleveland Shamans is at 15, and Oakland's at 16, and those two teams at 0-2, um, and really needing a lot of help this year, may need to start thinking about keeper situations for the upcoming year. But we will see. All right, let's head to week three. Uh, the ma I have two matchups I have my eye on. Both teams are 2-0, and so we're going to have at least th two 3-0 teams. That's San Fran Frenzy taking on Portland Carl Ramrod. And then Fargo and Bargo versus San Diego. And I like these games for different reasons. San Fran, Frenzy, and Portland. It's been a long time. I don't even know if it's ever happened that we've had two teams 2-0 and in that uh, division. So to see two teams compete for 3-0 and will be a lot of fun. Meanwhile, Fargo and San Diego, Aaron and Mike Hemmer are just really good friends. So I know in this game there's going to be more on the line than just winning a fantasy game. There's going to be some pride on the line. So we'll see what happens there. That will be a lot of fun for all of us to watch. Uh, upset alert, uh, Washington. No, I'm just joking. I'm not beating Brooklyn this week. Uh, the upset is going to be New York blackout over Minnesota. Uh, I think Elshon Jeffrey is taking on Seattle and Richard Sherman, so I do not like that matchup. As you men as I mentioned, I do not like a lot of his running backs, very streaky running backs. I'll take New York Blackout in the upset here, um, especially now if Gurley's back. That might be good news for him. Lastly, in the Pick'em Challenge, San Fran and Fargo tied, so they'll each get F uh, five FAB dollars. And otherwise, if you did rankings, I'll make sure to give you your five FAB dollars. Well, that sums it up here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm your commissioner, Tyler Burkhart. Best of luck to all of you in week three, and game on.